please sit down. I love the autumn. I go to the park most days. It is amazing to see the colours change day after day. Uh, trees are green, they're yellow, they're red, they're brown, they're orange, leaves are falling. As the summer leaves die and fall away, winter's coming. And that is a time of year where it can look as though everything's died. Cold, wet, it can be pretty bleak over the winter. But something else is going on under the surface. On all the branches which have dropped leaves are thousands of new little tiny buds, and you often can't see those, particularly from a distance. Plants are resting and getting ready for next spring when they will explode into life again. And our Bible reading that we had tells us that our world is like that as well. Revelation 7 tells us that what you see is not all there is. It is not the end of the story. Something else is going on under the surface. Now, unless you're living in a cave, you don't need me to tell you there are terrible things going on in the world at the moment. Uh, places like Israel, Gaza, Ukraine, uh, Sudan, lots of wars and awful, awful things being done to people. Or people look at the churches around our country and they see places closing down or people leaving the church. But Revelation 7 tells us that something different is happening. Something else is going on in heaven in front of God's throne. A great number of people, it says, so many people that no one could count them from every nation, tribe, people and language of the world. And what are those people doing? They are worshipping God. The elder in the passage tells them that they have been through terrible things and Jesus has rescued them because he died for them. So behind all the terrible things that are going on in our world is another reality. There is a place where people from all over the world are united in worshipping Jesus in front of God's throne. And that is what we are all looking forward to one day. A time when all of us will be together with them, billions and billions and billions of people. Our reading says about them, these people will never be hungry again. They will never be thirsty again. The sun will not hurt them. No heat will burn them. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of water that bring life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. If you are wondering what your future looks like as one of the saints of God, you could do much worse than read that little passage from Revelation 7. And that's a great thing to do on those days where you feel pretty grim over the winter. Today, we're thinking about All Saints Day. That was this week. It is a day where we think about all of God's people. You are all saints. Uh, we don't always think of ourselves that way. We tend to think that saints are those nice people up on, the, on the nice window up there, stained glass. You know, that, that's a saint. Uh, we're not saints. Turn to the people on your table. Tell them you are a saint. You are a sa you are saints, people of God. I didn't invite you to have a chat. God, it's like being in year seven, isn't it? Just as there's another reality behind what we can see, our reading helps us to see the world differently as well. You know, think of those war zones. Think of the crises in the world. What often what those release are thousands of little acts of kindness that happen every day, acts of heroism that happen in extreme circumstances. God uses his saints to bring hope and life in the middle of hardship and tragedy. You know, when you're praying for those places, pray for the Christians there because they have so many opportunities to be hope and light. And yes, it's true 
in our own country that in some places churches are closing down. But if you look a little bit more widely, the church in the world is bigger than it's ever been. It is thought that in China there are as many as 200 million Christians. I can't quite get my head around that number. It's three times the population of this country. Tens of millions of Christians in Iran. You know, places where it's really hard to be a Christian. And in our own country, it would certainly be true that there are fewer people who call themselves Christians. But actually, isn't it quite a good thing that our churches are full of people who are motivated and for whom membership of a church really means something and not just nominal Christians who turn up on the big occasions. In the autumn, you can't see what nature is doing to get ready for the spring. In the world, you can't see that there are billions of Christians, billions of saints, worshipping Jesus in heaven. And there are good things in the world that are harder to see too. God doing amazing things through his people. We are going to start uh, our next section, and I think Sarah is going to introduce us.